Hey everyone, Derek here, and today I'm diving into the Lofty Alarm Clock and Lamp. We're going to test the lamp's sunrise brightness against other sunrise alarm clocks, and we're also going to explore lux levels, blue light, flicker performance, and all of the features that these products have to offer. Let's get into it. So Lofty sells two things, an alarm clock and a lamp. The clock is going to run you $160 retail, while the lamp costs a bit more at $270. These can work together or independently of each other. You don't have to own both. The clock functions as a fancy two-phase alarm system with several wind-down features, such as meditations, white noise, and short stories. It also has a nice night light on the bottom. Of course, just after I recorded this, Lofty released a red night light version, so if you can get that one, that's the one I would recommend you get. The clock is really straightforward to use with just three buttons on the top to operate everything. The large button toggles the night light, powers off the display when held, and works as a back button in the menu. The small button is for selecting options, and the arrows handle navigation and volume adjustments. The clock is also battery powered, so you can use it during a power outage, or you can take it around the house with you if you want, and charging is done through the USB-C port in the back. There's also a feature in the app called Red Mode, which changes the clock face from white to amber. So it's not technically red, but I did prefer that quite a bit. It's a lot gentler on the eyes at night. So Lofty's original claim to fame was their two-phase alarm system. Here's how it works. Nine minutes before your scheduled alarm, the Lofty clock plays a gentle wake-up tone for several seconds. This is also when the Lofty lamp would begin its sunrise if you had that. The idea here is to gently rouse you out of deeper sleep stages into a lighter sleep stage before the actual alarm wakes you up nine minutes later. You can set up and edit all of your alarms right on the clock, but you can also do it from the app if you prefer that. Now, I'm an audibly light sleeper. Always have been, I wear earplugs every night. So I found that the first wake up tone woke me up every time, no matter how I set this thing. So I prefer a sunrise alarm only, you know, like an audio free alarm clock. But if you prefer an audible alarm, I think the two phase system is definitely worth trying because there's the potential for it to really alleviate that sudden wake up. We have recorded all of the get up and wake up tones and they're linked in the article for this video below. If you're curious, check those out. Now in the menu system, there's also an option called sounds and this is where you'll find all the white noise and ambience tracks. I really like the campfire one. This is a type of sound that I like to listen to at night, like while I'm reading or stretching or something. And with the Lofty, you can take it around the house with you and just plug it in at the bedside when you're ready to go to bed, which I like that you can do that. Like the Hatcher Store 2, the Lofty has a playlist menu where you can find stories, affirmations, meditations, breath work, and more. Now these can be stopped and started on the clock itself, so there is no need for you to have to access the app at night. However, I will say that the Hatch Restore 2 has a lot more wind down options and its routine builder is a lot cooler, but you do have to pay for that. Lofty's wind down stuff is all free, mostly. Lofty does offer a subscription service called Lofty Plus for $5 a month, but as far as I can tell, it's just for their AI story creation thing. Here's how this works. In the app, you select a prompt, which then gives you a questionnaire to fill out. After you finish this, it does behind the scenes stuff and you're sent an email that your story is complete. It appears in the app and then it can then be downloaded onto the clock. The stories themselves sound really good actually. The voice is very realistic. It's a soft woman's voice. It's relaxing, it's very chill. Perfect for evening use, I thought. However, it could be improved. I'd prefer to see like a general get to know me area of the app so that I could kind of pre-fill a lot of these questions and every questionnaire wouldn't be starting from scratch. I don't know, maybe they'll update this over time. The clock also supports Bluetooth, so if you wanted to be able to play your own music or podcasts or anything like that, you can do that too. Now I did test for EMFs and the only time I noticed it was when I was using Bluetooth. Other than that, I didn't detect any. So I don't think this thing is like phoning home unnecessarily. So it looks like you're good there. 
Okay, let's dive into the spectral testing that I did for the clock. I was really curious to see what the night light looked like, especially through the brown plastic on the bottom. So unfiltered, it turns out that the night light is just a standard 2700 Kelvin LED. But as soon as you flip it over and it's filtered through that brown plastic, the blue light shifts into red and what you get is about 2300 Kelvin light, quite a bit warmer. Now there is still a little bit of blue light in there, which some people might be concerned with, but when it's filtered through that brown plastic, it really dims the light even at full brightness. I was only able to detect like one lux just a few inches away. So this is very unlikely to suppress any melatonin when used at night. But again, there's a red version that you can buy. So you might just wanna get that if that's a concern. I also like to test flicker on anything that emits light and this performed very well. At 100% there is none and when dimmed there's like a 1% flicker at like 475 hertz which is really nothing to be concerned with. Next up is the lamp which I was originally interested in because I wanted to test its sunrise alarm feature. Visually, it's a very tall, minimal, modern aesthetic, and it doesn't take up much space on the desk. It has a similar footprint to the Casper Glow, for example. It's made out of all plastic, and there's a metal shade around the top. Controlling the lamp is very simple. There's just a little on-off button that also functions to switch the scenes, and then there's a rocker that you can use to change the brightness. In the app, you can change some of the scenes, I was just glad to see red as a default option because that's what I prefer to use. And the lamp does remember your last use setting so you don't have to worry about it blinding you if you just like using red like me. But okay, let's talk about that sunrise feature. For starters, you're stuck with a nine minute sunrise, which is weird. But weirder is that the functionality of the sunrise changes depending on whether or not you're using the clock or not. When used on its own, the sunrise begins at your alarm time, unlike every other sunrise alarm clock that completes its sunrise at the alarm time. But if you pair it with the clock, it begins nine minutes before your alarm time. So, I don't know, just weird. Now, kind of like the Hatch Restore 2 that I reviewed, there's a lot of sunrise options to choose from here, 13 to be exact. With that in mind, let's take a look at our test results to see if there's one that stands out among them. In order to test total brightness or lumens, I ran each sunrise inside of our integration sphere. So out of all the sunrises, Fiji seems to perform the best at 155 lumens. Comparing this to all the other sunrise alarm clocks we've tested, you can see that the lofty lamp falls into the lower end of the pack. It gets a little worse though. Similar to the Casper Glow, the lofty lamp emits light in all directions. So as soon as we measure lux or directional brightness, it falls all the way to the bottom of the pack. Suffice it to say that total brightness or lux is not a huge selling point here. Speaking of brightness, here's a quick 10 second time lapse of the lofty lamp in a dark room. You'll notice sudden increases in brightness right at the end and that brings me to our next graph. The sunrise curves are not great. There's this gradual increase and then a sudden spike in brightness right at the end, which is not what I like to see. I much prefer a more gradual curve like you see on the Lumi body clocks or the Philips smart sleep lamps. But because this is supposed to be paired with the clock and the two phase alarm, maybe they wanna wake you up at the end so it, it spikes like that, I don't know. Now I tested the flicker on this as well and the performance is pretty good. Again, we see a depth of around 2% at around 450 hertz, and it's the lower frequency stuff we worry about, so this really isn't too bad. Should be good here. Okay, so here are my final thoughts on these. The Lofty Clock is a well-designed device. It's easy to use, it looks great, and its goal of allowing you to wind down at night and wake you back up without your phone, I think is pretty well accomplished. While its two-phase alarm did not work for me, it's worth trying out if you prefer an audible alarm and are looking to try something a little different. Now, if you're sold on the clock, the Lofty Lamp is a good purchase because it works hand-in-hand -hand with that two-phase alarm. I also really liked how easy it was to use the red light and dim it at night. It's nice having a red lamp at the bedside. But if you're not getting the clock and you're just primarily interested in the sunrise effect, I think there are much better options out there. 
I have a video on the best sunrise alarm clocks that I'll link to up here in the description below if you wanna check that out. As far as the app experience goes, I thought it worked really well. I like that you really don't need to use it except for the initial setup. I did get some odd error messages though. Anytime I set an alarm on the lamp or the clock from the app, I got this weird sync was unsuccessful, please try again error at the bottom. And every time it synced just fine. There was no error. So I don't know what that was all about. So that wraps up this video. If you guys are curious, there is an article for this in the description below that has all the graphs and the details if you want to see more of that. If not, I will see you guys in the next one. See you.